When I was at uh, Flight Sim Expo 2018 last weekend, I was surprised by two things. First of all, that a lot of people uh, didn't even know about Air Manager and what it could do for cockpit builders and people who wanted to uh, create touchscreen uh, simulators and so on, uh, and also to create the content and not only use it, but create it. I was also surprised that a lot of Air Manager users, of which I spoke with many, uh, didn't know that you could use uh, Arduino uh, devices with Air Manager now, that that support was added in version 3 point something, uh, but certainly available now to run Arduino devices uh, with your panels and run them side by side to put the code for the hardware right in with the code for the graphical part of the instrument and just run it all as a, a single instrument that can support uh, your hardware and your software. Uh, and then that has an advantage that, uh, you know, you have one plug in to run everything and uh, and it's greatly simplifies maintaining your flight simulator. So what I wanted to do here briefly is show how to install the hardware into your Arduino, uh, how to uh, set up a simple uh, dual encoder with a push button and uh, and then go over on how to modify an instrument uh, from a graphical instrument that has been in the store for Air Manager available in the community store for free download, how you could take one of those instruments and modify it to be able to uh, use hardware controls with it. So let's get started. Okay, the first step is to install the Sim Innovations uh, Arduino software. So we'll go to the uh, Sim Innovations Wiki and scroll down to where it says hardware, click Arduino and scroll down to the installer. Now I'm using uh, beta 3.4 so I'm going to download that. If you were using 3.3 or uh, software you could download that. Of course as later versions down uh, come out you'll have those available. I'm going to go ahead and click down, download that to my uh, computer. It's a very small file, downloads quickly, open that up. And it's going to warn me that uh, it is a non uh, recognized app. I'm going to run anyway. After a quick security check here, should have the installer show up. Installer is quite simple. Now I haven't plugged in my Arduino yet. I'm going to plug that in. Let it power up. It may take a few seconds there. It's found it. It says an Arduino Uno on COM1. Now I'm going to come over here and show you the selections. Of course, uh, that's the only COM port available right now because that's the only Arduino uh, selected. You can see you can select a, a Mega, an Uno, a Nano, and a Nano Knobster. We're going to select the uh, Uno. And you can see that offers a, quite a number of channels for each device. You can have one Uno for each letter, one Nano for each letter, and one uh, Mega for each uh letter and also you can use each channel for a Knobster too or on the Knobster probably in the future oops so anyway then we'll just go uh, to install and that's about all there is to it don't require any other software just install it directly from uh, the installer program that you can get from the website okay that is installed I will warn you that uh, if you're trying to install numerous uh, Arduino devices, my suggestion is I've seen some little finicky uh, performance around the uh, port with multiple devices connected for uh, trying to load the software. You really don't know for sure which, which uh, Arduino you're loading the software in. I suggest that you try one. Uh, just completely uh, disconnect all and just attach one at a time. We even had one case where we needed to like reboot the computer between each Arduino to uh, get it to recognize that Arduino. The good news is once uh, once the software was loaded, we could attach uh, numerous devices uh, and they would all be uh, easily detected and they operated well together. So the next step will be to uh, go into Air Manager and uh, see if the device is connected. So now let's go into Air Manager here and click the Devices tab, and you can see the Arduino Uno is connected. 
Um, you can read the settings over here. It's channel A, pin mode, and it's in connected state. There's also a grayed out knobster here that was selected or uh, connected earlier. It will remember that. If we plug it back in, it'll be uh, already set up. But um, when, uh, when it's, uh, for example, if I disconnect the Uno here, you can see it grays out. As soon as I push it back in, it will detect after a short wait. It takes it sometimes takes a few seconds for about uh, 20 to 30 seconds for uh, air manager to detect. There we go. And there it is connected again. OK, let's move on now and we'll look at uh, uh, actually trying to do some uh, uh, work programming this UNO and show you how the uh, how the API works. Okay, so let's show you the hardware we have here. Here's an, uh, an UNO uh, with uh, the connection of a uh, rotary encoder. I'll show you the rotary encoder here. It's uh, soldered into uh, and connected to with uh, two knobs. It's got a uh, an outer encoder, an inner encoder like most uh, encoders that you see uh, for a radio frequency and it also has a push button function so uh, let's uh, let's see how we can program these uh, connections uh, I have uh, the small encoder the top encoder on pins 5 and 6 the uh, larger encoder on pins 2 and or 3 and 4 and then uh, the button is on pin number digital pin number 2 so uh, you can see there's a small program I've written here, hardware Arduino test. I'm going to uh, open the script for that and to show you what I've done here. This is just code that I pasted from the uh, wiki, uh, API wiki that's uh, available uh, from the uh, right up here. If you click the uh, API button, it'll open the wiki for you and you can look at each of these functions and there's some good examples there. What I want to show you here, a large encoder knob, that's the uh, outer knob or the larger lower knob. And uh, we say hardware dial add Arduino Uno D3 and Ardu Arduino Uno D4. Now there is clear in the wiki there is uh, actually a list of different devices, uh, Nano, Arduino uh, Uno, Arduino Mega and it shows you which pins are available for different kinds of devices. Um, but uh, these pins will work for the encoder or for the switches. So you can see we got hardware dial add, Uno AD3 and uh, digital pin 4. And then we have this, this uh, callback function which basically says if it's turning in the clockwise direction then it's going to print turn clockwise and uh, counterclockwise. Then we go to the second knob, smaller knob, and uh, it's exactly the same. Hardware dial add Arduino 5 and 6. And then uh, we have the callback working exactly the same. But now it's going to say the small dial turn clockwise or counterclockwise. But you can look this up on the API. Uh, the pins. Uh, uh, this what I'm doing here is actually a good way to to test your encoders hooked up right. You can use a little script like this and just uh, put the pins in and see see if it's really turning in the correct direction. And and because uh, sometimes it's a little confusing, which leads off the encoder are going where. And then finally we have the uh, the button down here at the bottom, and it's a hardware button add Arduino Uno channel A digital pin 2 and then there's a callback for the button pressed and the button released and all it says is print button pressed or button released. So let's fire up uh, X-Plane and uh, well actually before we do that let me get rid of this script. We can kind of look at it while we're uh, sitting here. And if we just run it here you know you'll see you see the, uh, the white background that's invisible uh, when you get it onto uh, into a panel, but in the, uh, the create mode, when you're running it locally here to test it, it's, it just shows up as white. So anyway, here's our rotary, rotary encoders that we uh, we have just installed, and we can test the code here by let's uh, go with the large encoder or the small encoder first, and we'll say uh, counterclockwise, 
actually it's a large one is two and three, three and four, and counterclockwise. And then through five and six would be the small knob, and the small turn counterclockwise. And then we can push the button down and release it. And you can see that all those functions are, are set up correctly. So let's fire up uh, X-Plane now and uh, try to actually operate the hardware. So now we have the uh, Arduino connected. We have the simulator running. I'm going to just demo how these knobs work. I'm going to grab the uh, large knob and turn that clockwise, turn it counterclockwise. And I'm going to take the small knob, turn it clockwise. You can see on the uh, Turn it uh, counterclockwise, and you can see it says small dial counterclockwise. I'm going to push the button, button pressed, button released, button pressed, button released. So everything is working, and let's now take uh, this little bit of this knowledge that we have here and try to modify an existing instrument to uh, run using this hardware that we've just put together. So let's uh, stop that instrument, and let's go looking for something... Uh, that we can modify. Let's find a radio com. Uh, the com. Let's do the com nav one. I'll just uh, run this first so you can see what it looks like. It is a, uh, a radio that has uh, two knobs, uh, one for com and one for nav. We can, of course, click the, the encoder, inner and outer knob, so it's similar to what we have. Uh, what we'll try to do is we'll try to modify, we'll try to replace this this uh, screen the graphical knob that's uh, for the LCD screen with the encoder uh, that we have, and then program the push button to do this frequency swap. So we'll give that a try. So let's uh, first let's close this. Let's uh, clone this one. Uh, we'll, so we're not messing with the uh, one that we've done. I'm going to change clone to let's say hardware. And okay, and we uh, we see it here. Uh, hardware. Let's open that script. As we open the script, we're looking for the dial. We could search for dial add, but I know it's down here towards the bottom. Okay, so let's look at the nav big and nav small. Uh, that would be the uh, nav big would be the outer knob that does the whole numbers, and the small would be the dial that. Uh, that does the smaller numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to um, uh, the script that we just did. Let's steal some some of what we did there. Let's go with this 3-4. So let's go here and so just including the comma layer, let's take the reference from the dial at hardware. In fact, let's go all the way back to hardware add. We'll go hardware add and copy that. And then go back to the script we're working on. And let's go down here to the big because that was the 6, 5, and 6. And we'll replace that with there. Okay, control B. So, there we got, uh, actually I wanted 5 and 6, didn't I? Uh, no, 3 and 4, that's correct. So let's go down to the larger one and replace the dial add with hardware dial add and get rid of the reference to the uh, the image. It tells us the image and the, and the position. We don't need that anymore. And this time we'll make it five and six. Okay, so we've corrected that. Now let's go down to this. Find the transfer button here, nav transfer button. And we want to make that, uh, I'm just going to type this one, HW hardware add, button add. And we can replace this with that. Uh, actually, we only need one of them, but I'll just paste it in here. And we'll get rid of one, and we'll change this three to, to a two. And what we have here now is nav transfer, the hardware button add. I need to get rid of this too. Hang on, should be hardware button add. Yeah, that was not. I, I copied too much of that. But let's get this put button in here. We'll get it right eventually. Okay. Underscore. Now we have it. Hardware button add. Arduino Uno. Channel A. 
digital pin tube, and then we have our nav transfer function already written uh, for the uh, callback function already written. Okay, I think I got it in there right now. Let's give it a try. I will uh, save that, close that, and the simulator is running. So let's run this, get it up and running. Now you see, since we eliminated the reference to that knob, it's no longer there. And I'm going to grab my encoder knob here, and I'm going to grab the outer knob, and that should change the whole numbers. I'm turning it clockwise now. You can see it's working counterclockwise, reducing. Let's try the small knob clockwise, counterclockwise. The uh, decimal portion is decreasing. And now I'm going to push the button. And again, and you can see I'm swapping the frequencies. So you can see how easy that was to take an existing instrument. And now you might want to, in real, if you were doing a cockpit, you might want to 3D print or create some kind of a uh, mask or, or have the show through the mask of your of your uh, simulator. Of course you'd have to do the same thing with another dual encoder for the comm side and uh, you might want to actually use a button, an encoder without a button or, or put a separate button in. Uh, same thing with on off switch, all that stuff. But it's the same principle uh, and it's very simple as you see uh, to convert something over from uh, from a, an instrument that's already in the store, of which there's 450 plus in there right now. It's uh, to find an instrument that uh, suits you and modify it for hardware uh, fairly easily. The API covers all the possible possibilities. I mean, you can even, instead of uh, writing to a text field here to put the numbers, you can put a seven, seven, seven segment LED uh, chain there and, uh, and show those. And if you wanted to make a completely uh, hardware instrument, and not just put a mask over an LCD screen. So that's really all there is to it. It's fairly simple to use Arduino with Air Manager. If you already use Air Manager, it's a piece of cake. You just have to uh, modify scripts and learn a little bit of scripting, but it's exactly the same that you use for doing the, uh, if you're creating instruments. And uh, all the 450 instruments can be uh, modified uh, any of the dials, uh, buttons, switches, and so on can be modified to work with hardware. I knew nothing about Arduino when I started this, uh, didn't even know how to spell it, and uh, it's been fairly easy to figure out because of my knowledge of Air Manager. If you if you don't use Air Manager and you're using uh, uh, Arduino, this is an easy way to convert over to Air Manager. You get the benefit of all the the uh, graphical capabilities. Not to mention the fact that it, you know, works with uh, with the uh, iPad and uh, the uh, Android version of, of Air Manager, which is, gives you other options for displaying things in the cockpit. So uh, I'm pretty bullish on um, on Air Manager, as you know. I've been working with those guys, uh, helping out as much as I could because I really believe in what they're doing, and uh, I don't get any pay. I'm doing this strictly because I I like. I like what Air Manager is becoming. So uh, I hope this helps. I hope you've been able to get an idea of uh, uh, how you would make a conversion uh, to using Air Manager for Arduino devices uh, to build your complete cockpit with a single plug-in so that you don't have the conflicts or difficulties with one plug-in. You can run everything. And that's kind of, you know, I think was their dream when they started was to try to create a uh, more unified, integrated solution at cockpit building uh, compared to uh, uh, to the way it's been in the past, kind of a uh, hodgepodge, uh, different tools all working together and uh, having to try to maintain all those. So take a look at Air Manager if you haven't, uh, and I uh, hope this helped. Subscribe if you'd like. I'll be doing more videos. I'm starting to work on the, uh, I, if you've looked at my earlier videos, I was working on a uh, overhead panel with the X737 uh, for X-Plane, and uh, I am now going to convert that over to Zebo, the Zebo uh, uh, mod for the uh, stock 737 for uh, X-Plane, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that modified to work with some of the uh, prepared and uh, FSX options too. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.